So a question from Zach here. He said, what were your personal thoughts on the interview you guys did with Jimbo Fisher on National Signing Day? Well, Zachary, I'm glad you asked because I have plenty of thoughts. So those of you who missed it last week, we're on National Signing Day. We started at 9 in the morning. We're all the way at like 3 or 3.30 in the afternoon. So we've been on several hours. Several cans of caffeine have been consumed. And we get Jimbo and we get Nick Saban back to back. And so we got Jimbo Fisher first. And we got a little ways in there. And let me tell you guys, there's a lot going on behind the scenes on those shows. So you have the SID, the sports information director. You're in constant communication in the control room. The control room is then in your ear in this little earpiece here called an IFB. And so much as producer Jesse's talking to me right now, I got Trey Scott and I got Tully and the folks down there in Fort Lauderdale doing a great job. And they're in my ear and they're letting me know how much time Jimbo Fisher has. So I find out we got about minute, minute change left. So I figure I'm going to ask him a generic NIL question and he can go wherever he wants to with it. So I just asked, what do you think about NIL and how did you guys use it for this signing class? And he said it didn't affect recruiting at all. Now, I don't believe that to be true, nor does Jimbo Fisher need for it to be true. And so to me, like there's nothing illegal about it. I'd own it. I mean, it's, it's nonsense to suggest that NIL had nothing to do with it. Now, here's what also is nonsense on the other side. And this is what my buddies over at Gigum 24-7 and, and Texags, what they would say. They would say, okay, well, are you saying that Texas A&M disproportionately um, accelerated recruiting using this when everyone else could have used it too? No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying at all. In fact, I didn't say anything, period. Uh, but Jimbo took it and ran with it. Now, he wasn't directing his ire at us. I just happened to ask the question. But boy, he got into sliced bread, literally. And he got into a lot of the headlines that have been out there about an X and Y dollar figure that had been used by Texas A&M to attract this recruiting class. Look, it's obvious they took recruiting up a notch or three notches this cycle. Um, I, listen, I, I open my email inbox, and here's why I'll take you behind the scenes a little bit. I open my email inbox after the show, and I'm going on various message boards after the show in our network, and I saw some notifications, and I saw some emails. And some of you had reached out, and you asked in varying degrees of colorful language why I didn't push him more, which would have been the most ignorant thing I could have done. I'm going to tell you first off, because there's a different standard when you're on a very, very big platform with a company like CBS, and you are interviewing a very high profile subject. And what I mean by that is, if you don't have facts in front of you, it's best to keep your mouth shut. I didn't have facts in front of me. You can go post what you want to on a message board. You know, you can say what you want to in this chat right now, to varying degrees at least. I can't just spout it off to him. I can't say, coach, I heard this rumor and that rumor. Because you know what he can do and checkmate me? and possibly take legal action against my company if he really wants to. What he can say is, could you provide me those details? Could you provide me that evidence? You know, because you just talked about my name and my university's name, and you just said something that you can't prove. There are laws against that. Yeah, there are. And he may not press charges, but there are laws against that. And so uh, it would have been very, very ignorant for me to do that. Secondly, how about this? How about I also had folks in my ear saying, this is it, this is a wrap, this is a wrap. And we blew straight through that. I did ask him a follow-up question. So we really went way beyond the time that we had allotted. Now, he wasn't dying to get up, as you saw. But the exchange, the back and forth, it started to go in a direction that I was very surprised by. Because I didn't know that he had all that teed up. It was so obvious that he had been waiting for signing day. And then he was ready to tee off. He even said in our interview, you wait till I get to my press conference today. When I get to our press conference today, I'm going to get into this a lot more. That's why he put it in, he had the reading glasses on and off, on and off during the press conference. Uh, look, I got no problem with Jumbo Fisher. In fact, afterwards, you know, we talked to a and They said, good stuff, great job. So th there was nothing between anyone here and Jumbo Fisher. There was no ill will there at all. Uh, I did think that it was a little curious that he said this didn't impact recruiting at all. I think it did impact recruiting. Uh, but at the same time, if I'm a Texas A&M fan, what I would say is everyone could have played by this game. There are certain state laws that prevented some universities from playing it like other universities did, and that's not A&M's fault. A&M, as best you can tell, and I didn't have any of you provide me any definitive evidence, as best I could tell, with the information in front of me, they just played the game the way they could play it. And they signed the best class in the history of organized recruiting rankings in the process. But I had fun with it. Like, I was glad it happened. Number one, because we got a head start on the rest of the nation because he didn't have his press conference for another 30 minutes. Uh, number two, 
Because I told him, even afterwards, I don't even care if I agree with what someone says. If a coach, like, like Mario Cristobal did earlier in the show, if a coach is willing to come on air with you and he's willing to really spill his soul, tell you exactly what he thinks, and there's, there's no filter on it, you don't get that very often. I mean, there are entire departments within universities that are specifically created to make sure coaches don't ever say anything. Make sure players don't say anything, make sure coaches don't say anything. So when one's willing to be open and raw and honest with you, I said when we wrapped up the interview, I appreciate you for saying what a lot of people in your profession would never say. And that's just how you honestly feel. And I knew at that point, you throw it out there, you let the public think what they think about it. I don't need to tell you what you think about it. It's the entire reason you tune in. I mean, you're not five years old. So some of you loved it, some of you hated it, some of you thought he was lying, some of you thought he was telling the truth. They're always shades of gray where I think he's the most aggravated and I totally get this. In this vein, I would probably be just like him. He says it had nothing to do with recruiting. I don't buy that. But here's also what he knows. He knows that he has put together a staff out there that's really good and, and they killed it out there and they hit the pavement like they've probably never hit it before. And he feels like when people just throw out a dollar figure that may very well be false, but when people throw out that claim in general, they're discounting the work they've done. And that would aggravate me too. So I understood it from all sides. I understand people who call BS on him when he says there's nothing about this that impacted recruiting. I totally get how he'd be irate when people just dismiss a record-setting class as, well, yeah, but they bought it. Well, no, that's not the way it works. That's, that's not exactly the way it works. So I credit Texas A&M, and I think that you will see a lot of adjustments made from a lot of different angles because of the way this recruiting cycle in general played out. But what you can't do is you can't take that away from them.